Welcome. NOAA has just issued its September of 2020 Global Climate Report and this video is a summary of that report. First I'll go over a summary of what we're going to talk about today. September of 2020 was the warmest September on record. And that is surprising because we have La Nina conditions presently, which means a large portion of the Pacific Ocean is below average temperatures. There were wildfires continuing in most of the western states, although more recently we've had a little bit of cooling there and a little bit of rain, which helps. Interestingly, the Arctic and Antarctic sea ice area are trending in opposite directions for the first time in several years. The hurricane season continues to set records with every new storm. We're now at Delta and only need two more storms in the last six weeks to pass to the 2005 record season. Let's take a look at the, the various areas of the globe and see how they rank. Globally, as I said, September was the warmest September on record with an excess of 0.97 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. That's an increase of 0.3 over last year. Land areas were also the warmest with an increase of 1.49 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. And that represents a 0.11 degrees centigrade increase over last year. The oceans were the fourth warmest at 0.77 degrees centigrade, a drop of 0.01 degrees centigrade from last year. Now this is not surprising because this year we have La Nina conditions in place and that causes a large portion of the Pacific Ocean to be cooler than average. The Northern Hemisphere was at its third warmest September on record at an excess over the 20th century average of 1.21 degrees centigrade, a drop of 0.02 since last year. The Southern Hemisphere was its warmest uh, ever recorded at 0.7 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. That's an increase of 0.06 degrees centigrade over last year. That means we've had 429 consecutive months with temperatures above the 20th century average. Well, first let's see how these temperatures are distributed. This is a map showing the departure from the average measured over the last 30 years, that's 1981 to 2010. You can see that the main areas of high temperature are the Western United States and the waters offshore there, Europe, Siberia, China, Australia, and fairly large portion of South America. There are some cool areas too, the central part of the US and Canada, Greenland, the Middle East, and there's a large area of cool water off the southeast coast of South Africa. But the area that we're really concerned with is this one. The large amount of cold water off the western shore of South America. This is indicative of a La Nina forming. And in fact, we do now have officially La Nina conditions. And we'll talk a little bit about how that will affect our weather in a subsequent slide. Now this is a very useful map. However, it doesn't tell you which of these temperatures are record lows or record highs. And so we need a different sort of map. The type of map we need is called a percentiles map. On this map, record warm and record cold are defined by colors. Really dark blue is record cold. A medium shade of blue is much colder than average. A light blue is cooler than average. White is near average. A light red is warmer than average. A darker red is much warmer than average. And a dark, very dark red is record warmest. And you can see from this map, there are no record cold or much colder than average pixels on this map. Most of the pixels are either warmer than average, much warmer than average, and quite a number, nearly um, well over 100, are record warm. This is why September of 2020 was the warmest September on record. So here's my matrix illustrating the relative ranking of months over the last six years. You can see here that September of 2020 is marked in first place. That pushes 2019, 2016 and 2015, which are all originally tied for first place, back into second place. 
I still maintain that 2020 is likely to be the second warmest year on record. However, if it outshines 2016 significantly for the last three months, it could even become the, the warmest year on record. Wouldn't that be something? 2016, remember, was an El Nino year, and 2020 is an Enzo neutral, or uh, towards the end of the year, going to be a La Nina year. So far, we've been dealing with the surface temperatures of the Earth. Now let's take a look at the upper atmosphere, different layers in the atmosphere, uh, starting with the lower troposphere, which is an altitude of about four kilometers on average. Two main groups do this. That's the University of Alabama Huntsville and Remote Sensing Systems. And in this case, they seem to almost agree on the temperature, ranking it as second and the third warmest September on record. Interestingly, their slope of increase in temperature is 0.2 degrees centigrade per decade, which now is exactly the same as what you get when you consider the surface temperatures. Next, we go to the mid troposphere, which is a bit higher, about seven kilometers. Both of these groups agree at being the third warmest on record, but the, the slope, as you would expect, is a little bit less up there, about 1.3 degrees, about 0.13 degrees centigrade per decade. Lastly, the stratosphere, which is the odd man out, as I've said before, and it's cooling. It was in both groups ranked the coolest uh, stratosphere ever recorded for September, and the rate of decline is 0.27 degrees centigrade per decade. For some obscure reason, the sea ice extent figures were not available in the normal report, so I had to go to the National uh, Snow and Ice Data Center to get them, and those plots are not quite in the same format. But anyway, we can do the best we can. September of 2020 was the second lowest sea ice extent in the Arctic and it continues the downward trend that we've seen for many years. The data for the Antarctic was uh, even more obscure and incomplete. There's a little note saying that it may not have reached its maximum extent yet, uh, which may be a reason for them not to have given the final numbers. But um, you can see that the September record is fairly close to um, average, perhaps a little bit above. Next, we'll take a look at the concentration of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. And we see that for September of 2020, it was 411.29 parts per million. That means it's likely not to go below 410, and that's the first time that has happened ever uh, on record. So we've set a new record in September. That compares with 408.54 parts per million last year, an increase of 2.75 parts per million, which is about a typical increase for uh, this time of year. As I mentioned before, La Nina conditions now prevail. The blue dotted line here shows the threshold for La Nina events. And you can see the current month's uh, point is well below that line. So we are in La Nina conditions. And from the models, it looks as though the trend is going to be for uh, even stronger La Ninas to come, at least until uh, the spring of next year. So how is this going to affect our weather? The major effects of La Nina are felt in the United States and Canada. When we have a strong La Nina, it is generally drier along the, the Gulf Coast and southern states and slightly warmer from Texas round to the Mid-Atlantic, which is good because that's where I live. In the Ohio Valley and to the Great Lakes, it's going to be wetter as it will be in the Northwest. This also tends to make Canada and uh, the northern tier United States much colder. So uh, we'll be looking out for that pattern. Now this isn't a definite thing, this is something like a 60-40 chance. So don't be surprised if the current La Nina bucks the, the trend a little bit, but uh, this is certainly the, on, this is certainly on average what we can expect. We certainly have had a very active 2020 hurricane season so far and September was no exception. We had 10 more named storms, four which became hurricanes, 
There was one Category 1, two Category 2s and a Category 4. That's classed as a major hurricane. The Pacific hurricane season has had four more named storms in the month. One became a hurricane, a Category 4. We only need two more named storms in the Atlantic Basin to equal the record 2005 hurricane season. And we've got six weeks of the season left to go. So it looks as though that uh, record may well fall. Okay, so what have we learned this time? 2020 is still on pace to become the second warmest year on record, may even surpass 2016 to become the first warmest uh, year on record. That will give us seven record years in a row. La Nina is active until at least next spring. So in the meantime, stay safe and goodbye.